Well, I gotta admit, I love my desktop PC. It may not be the fastest gaming PC available, but it's definitely doing the job playing VR games and even recording gameplays at the same time. But how about VR-ready laptops? How about using a powerful gaming laptop to play VR games? And how about using that laptop together with a high-end, wide field of view VR headset such as Pimax 5K Plus or even the Pimax 8K? The question today is, are the current VR-ready laptops powerful enough to give you a desired and most importantly required frame rate in VR games to give you that fully enjoyable VR experience? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna find out today. In this episode of my Pimax 8K and Pimax 5K Plus coverage, we will test some of the most popular and GPU demanding VR games available right now on my VR ready laptop with an NVIDIA GDX 1070 graphic card and an Intel i7 processor. Whenever you are a backer of the upcoming Pimax wide field of view headset or if you are just planning to pre-order the 8K or the 5K Plus next month, this video will give you some of the hints on what PC you might need to use to fully enjoy your brand new wide field of view VR experience. And if I haven't said it yet, I would like to welcome you all back to my channel guys and I hope you will find this video interesting. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will upload tons of new Pimax 8K and Pimax 5K Plus related videos here on Sweet Viber. Before we begin, a big thanks to all my lovely Patreons supporting my channel and a very special thanks and shout out to my official sponsors on Patreon, Commander Darklight and Art Armin. So yes, today we're talking about VR gaming on a laptop with the Pimax 8K and 5K Plus. And those of you that still haven't seen my full in-depth review of the Pimax headsets, I really recommend you to check it out now. The review is nearly 3 hours long, but it goes crazy in deep into the details and it will definitely give you everything you need to know about the Pimax 8K and the 5K Plus. Anyway, let me first introduce my VR ready laptop for you. It's not fancy to be honest and I know there are faster gaming laptops on the market but this was the best I could find for the money available. My laptop contains a GDX 1070 graphic card, an Intel i7 7700HQ processor with 4 cores and 8 threads, 16GB of DDR4 memory clocked at 2400MHz and 100Hz G-Sync display. What needs to be pointed out here is that my laptop GDX 1070 is not a bad graphic card and since the Nvidia Pascal family, laptop GPUs are no longer M-classed as they have almost the same performance as the desktop version GPUs, well almost at least. According to most benchmarks online, the GDX 1070 in a laptop is approximately 5-10% to slower in games compared to a desktop 1070 version. So have that in mind throughout this video. The GPU on this laptop is not overclocked more than already from the factory, mainly because of heat issues, but I have made some custom adjustments to this laptop in general to further improve the overall performance. First improvement is a custom voltage curve I did in Afterburner which give me more efficient voltage to the GPU by not overvolting it and especially not overheating it in high frequencies. Too much heat causes the GPU to throttle which results in lower boost clocks and of course lower performance in VR games. Secondly, the Intel i7 processor is also undervolted to maintain the full power on 4 cores but to not use more voltage than necessary. Once again, this is to maintain a more reasonable temperature on the CPU and also more stable performance. Undervolting your CPU by only 100 millivolt can lower your CPU temperature of more than 15 or 20 degrees of Celsius. But please be advised that undervolting could actually destroy your laptop CPU if you don't know what you're doing, so please be careful and really read a lot about it before you try it on your gaming laptop. Besides the voltman adjustment, I'm using Windows Windows 10 Pro with latest updates, the latest beta version of SteamVR, NVIDIA graphic card drivers 399.07 and of course the latest PyTool version 76 which I covered in my last video. This version has good performance increment and also some rendering improvements for the Pimax 8K and 5K Plus headsets. So now when you know all about my VR ready laptop, I won't make you wait much longer. Don't worry, we're gonna jump straight into the test where I'm gonna play and benchmark 
smoke 19 different VR games including first person shooters, racing simulators, space simulators and much more. But before we begin, let me clarify what settings I'm using in SteamVR in PyTool and also why. The reason for this video is to give you an idea of how GDX 1070 laptop performs in some of the most popular VR games available. But that also means that the games needs to look good enough for this test. So what I'm doing in each game is to balance the settings to get at least an acceptable image quality considering that we are actually using the most high-end virtual reality headsets on the market. And as the biggest and most important feature on the Pimax 8K and 5K Plus is the wild field of view, I decided to make all these tests with normal field of view mode, which is approximately 150 degrees horizontally. The Pimax headsets also have a large field of view mode of 170 degrees and a small field of view of 120 degrees. But the large field of view is in most cases too GPU demanding even for the most powerful desktop pieces as my previously mentioned VR rig for example. While the small field of view might give you an extra performance boost playing on the laptop, I don't think that backers and buyers of the Pimax 8K or the 5K Plus really pay the price to play VR games with such a narrow field of view anymore. 110 or 120 degrees field of view is lost generation tech, we're past that now, I would say. And I promise I will cover everything regarding the Pimax large field of view and the small field of view as well in other upcoming videos. But for today, let's just stick with the normal field of view, which is way beyond any other VR headset currently has and can offer you anyway, right? As I mentioned in my last video about PyTool version 101.76, the best balance between performance and quality for both headsets is to have PyTool rendering quality slider at 1.0 and the SteamVR super sampling value at 100%. But this is a very high resolution for a laptop to handle, and even if I said recently that going below 80% in SteamVR super sampling might end up with a lower image quality, I still think that 70% is an exception acceptable value, especially for a laptop GPU. So in all these upcoming tests, we're going to use PyTool render quality slider at 1.0 and SteamVR super sampling at 70% to still maintain most of the quality, but also give some headroom for more laptop performance. Remember, I'm also recording all this while playing, so upon any frame rate you see here, you should add at least 5 or even 7 frames per second on top of that if you play the games without recording with OBS Studio of course. So are we ready to jump in? Let's go guys! We're gonna start off as always with one of my favorite VR racing simulators, Acero Corsa. As you may know, this game runs flawlessly on my desktop PC, running on highest in-game settings even at PyTool at 1.5 and large field of view. Thing is, to make a Cero Corsa to run smooth on a laptop using a both Pimax 8K and 5K+, Plus, you will need to lower a lot of in-game settings such as anisotropic filtering, wall detail to low, shadow detail to low and also practically disable all post-processing and effects, having just normal mirror resolution and low reflection quality. If you do these changes and run this simulator with PyTool 1.0 and SteamVR super sampling of 70 or maybe 80%, you will mostly maintain a frame rate between 75 and 90 frames per second. The 8K handles the game more smoothly in the test as the 8K has max refresh rate of 80 frames per second and only need to render 80 frames per second of course. On the 5K Plus you will get a more unstable frame rate going all between 75 and 90, obviously because of the maximum refresh rate of the 5K Plus is 90 frames per second. Depending on how many opponents you will have on track will also be a very important factor for the frame rate. And in this test I'm only using between 3 and 4 opponent cars. Also, different tracks give also slightly different frame rate. As you can see, a Zero Corsa is fully playable on the 8K and the 5K Plus even when using the GDX 1070 laptop. With just some minor FPS dips here and there, but the overall experience is still very very good. The image quality using these 
settings mentioned above will not give you the sharpest image possible on the Pimax as I feel there is a significant difference between using SteamVR super sampling of 70% and 100% and also going with PyTool 1.25 or 1.5 will make the game image much more sharp and crisp with less aliasing of course. But I still think that the image quality with these settings with PyTool of 1.0 is looking great and more than enough especially considering that you're playing on a laptop. All in all, Acero Corsa is definitely running great on my laptop and if you just tweak some of the settings mentioned, I'm sure we will be able to find a perfect balance for stable 80 or 90 frames per second. Next game is Elite Dangerous, or well, I know this is not a game, but a very complex spaceship simulator with a huge amount of players and a big community overall. I guess at least 20% of all Pimax backers are Elite Dangerous fans. And I, even if I know a VR Ready laptop is not really recommended for VR simulators, I still think there are chances you might be able to run this baby quite butter smooth. I'm personally not a big fan of Elite Dangerous, so I don't know what all these in-game settings really does, but after fiddling around for a couple of weeks now with the settings in Elite Dangerous, especially on my desktop PC, I know that the two resolution scale sliders are very very important in terms of overall game sharpness. In this test I'm using a value of 1.0 on each, not because it makes it fully smooth to play on the laptop, but because that's the minimum values I would choose to still maintain acceptable good sharpness in-game using the Pimax 8K and the 5K Plus headsets. So with these two values at 1.0 and overall in-game graphical settings of between medium to low, we can somehow get Elite Dangerous to run quite acceptable, at least in the first tutorial mission I guess. I know there are more demanding scenes and unfortunately I got not recorded those, but I estimate the frame drop to be around 10 to 15 less frames per second in the docking areas for example. I know, this is not really great performance and the real Elite Dangerous fan is probably laughing at me right now, but what I'm trying to point out here is that if you really need to play Elite Dangerous on a GDX 1070 laptop, it's not impossible after all. Lowering down other settings might give you more boost and going lower down with the two resolution scale sliders might even give you stable 80 or 90 frames per second. But that's of a cost of the image quality of course and personally I wouldn't accept this simulator to be run on the Pimax 8K or the 5K Plus with the values lower than 1.0. So if you are a real Elite Dangerous grinder and want to enjoy this simulator with the best image possible, get yourself a real desktop gaming ring instead and leave the laptop for other purposes. I would personally not play Elite Dangerous on my laptop unless I really had to, on vacation trips for example. All in all, this simulator is a second example on that VR ready laptops are not completely limited to simple VR gaming, but they are also far from the raw power you will get with a desktop PC, especially with a PC with a GDX 1080 Ti or the new RTX family. Let's move on, another VR simulator and this time a VR title that really is demanding on the GPU, Project Cars 2. I hope you have seen my last video where I played this simulator in stable 80 frames per second on a Pimax 8K with GTX 1080 Ti, right? I was also using PyTool 1.0 but SteamVR super sampling was then at 100%. We had simply outstanding performance on the desktop PC with the latest PyTool 76 update. Today it's a totally different story. Running Project Cars 2 on a GDX 1070 laptop with the same PyTool version at the PyTool rendering quality slider 1.0 and SteamVR 70% even with almost the lowest in-game settings possible including in-game super sampling at 1.0, no anti-aliasing whatsoever, most settings to low and almost every effect turned off, we can simply not get an acceptable frame rate. The GPU just chokes and my laptop suddenly acts like a potato. We can hardly squeeze out 40 frames per second and sometimes we are even down below 30. This is just not playable at all and of course with the Pimax built-in reprojection your head movements will be still smooth but the whole track, the opponent cars and everything around you just stutters badly while you're trying to push the gas pedal. 
Trying to even hold the car on the track is difficult I would say, as the low frame rate simply adds too much lag to the gameplay and I would say Project Cars 2 is really not made for laptop gaming, at least not in VR and especially not with the high resolution and next generation VR headset Pimax 8K and 5K+. In this video, I only did this test on the Pimax 5K+, Plus, as the performance is simply identical to the 8K. The image quality is quite jaggy as we have no extra super sampling in game and no anti-aliasing added, so the image quality is barely accepted as well, or at least at bare minimum to be acceptable. So no, if you really want to end your Project Scores 2 in VR on Pimax, invest in a desktop PC with at least a GDX 1080 Ti or better. And the same goes for other simulators such as R-Factor 2, Dirt Rally, Euro Track Simulator, American Track Simulator and other VR racing sims. This is just too frustrating. Next up, Skyrim VR. As you have seen me playing this beautiful game many times before, both on the last generation's headsets such as the HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, Samsung Odyssey, but also on the Pimax, the game is not that GPU demanding despite being looking very nice. But the in-game super sampling and some of the options can really tank the frame rate, especially in some specific parts of the map. And especially when you're rendering this game in a much higher resolution that it really is made for from the start. Playing Skyrim VR on your GDX 1070 laptop is totally doable, but you will need to lower down the in-game super sampling to a minimum and you will also want to lower the shadows and effects. I'm really not a fan of the adaptive TAA anti-aliasing as it makes the game extremely blurry and turning it off will also gain you nearly 10 frames per second and make the image much sharper on distance, even if it introduces some jaggedness on straight edges and some shimmering around trees and outdoor environments environment. Still, having a frame rate of around 70 or at least 60 frames per second most of the time in game makes it actually very playable. And no, I really tried but I just couldn't get this game to run in stable 80 frames per second or 90 frames per second on the 5k with my laptop no matter how hard I tried. Maybe there is some hidden secrets that I'm not aware of but at least in the in-game options there is simply nothing more I can do to stable the frame rate, at least not while using normal field of view and Python tool at 70%. Of course, lowering the Pi tool to below 1.0 or going further down on the SteamVR super sampling might eventually give you a fully smooth frame rate, but you will most likely sacrifice too much of the sharpness and clarity, which in my opinion is not worth it. As a bonus, I actually tried the game on my laptop with small field of view, which is approximately 120 degrees field of view, and I gained around 10 to 15 frames per second, and now in many locations on the map, I could probably reach stable 80 frames per second using the Pimax 8K. So the option is there for you to decide, and even if small field of view, on the Pimax 8K and 5K Plus is more narrow than the normal field of view which is 150 degrees, it's actually still wider than any other VR headset can actually offer you right now, so of course it's worth a try. All in all, Skyrim VR is playable on a GTX 1070 laptop. It's far from perfect, but with a fully acceptable frame rate overall. Now let's try out something different now. A very old game which runs great in VR thanks to one of the most popular and appreciated VR mods ever made, Doom 3 BFG Edition. Running this game on the Pimax 8K and the 5K Plus is a blast and the creepy feeling and atmosphere gets you even more creepy now and intense with that wide field of view. And using a desktop PC with for example a GDX 1080 Ti, you can really max out the game in terms of graphical settings including high in-game super sampling. On the GDX 1070 laptop with Pimax it's not really that super smooth and I needed to go down with the in-game resolution scale to default 1.0 and disable anti-aliasing but having these settings we actually get quite an acceptable performance spanning between 70 and 90 frames per second on the Pimax 5K+. Once again the performance is kind of identical with both the Pimax 8K and the 5K+, as we're using the same Pi tool and the same SteamVR settings so I have only 
recorded this 5K plus footage to let you see the frame rate jumping up to 90 frames per second. The game graphics, sharpness and clarity is really great on both headsets and even if the blacks are not fully black on the Pimax, there are mostly a lot of contrasty scenes so you won't really bother at that about the blacks I think. To really enjoy this game with stable 90 frames per second you might need to go down to Pytool 0.75 or better just lower the in-game render scale for more performance headroom, especially in those intense scenes with many monsters inside. Either way, this game is a blast in VR and I'm so happy to say it runs with fully acceptable frame rate on the Pimax with only a GDX 1070 laptop, I was not expecting that to be honest. Arizona Sunshine. This game is actually much more GPU demanding than it really should be, I, if you ask me at least. It's built on the Unity engine and to be honest I don't really understand what's really tanking the performance so much. But the fact is that even with very low in-game shadows, render scale at 1.0, low settings in general and quite a lot of jagged edges in the game, the game still runs like a wreck on my GDX 1070 laptop. And I have a really hard time to believe it will be much better on a desktop GDX 1070 GPU. Lowering the field of view to small mode might give you some extra 10 or 15 frames per second, but in the end it's far from fully enjoyable with an extra frame rate of 40 to 50 and even lower at times. Yes, it is playable, but having such low frame rates makes the game really laggy and hard to master. I even had a hard time to aim on the opponents because of all reprojection and once you get to the more busy parts in the game it gets even worse of course. I need to add that even my my GDX 1080 Ti is struggling holding up the frame rate in Arizona Sunshine on the Pimax 8K headsets, especially if you want the game to really shine with great sharpness. It's nearly impossible I would say, so no wonder my laptop is struggling. So is this game really a blast in VR? Well yes it is, but definitely not on a GDX 1070 laptop, that's for sure. Now let's try Budget Cuts, a really cool game that is made by the Swedish developers Neat Corporation. I have never played through this game more than the first hour or so as I was actually saving up this title to enjoy it on the Pimax 5K and the 8K, but I can already now say that it won't happen on the GTX 1070 laptop at least, as the performance is really really disappointing. Being a rather simple Unity engine game, I must say it's surprisingly demanding and my laptop struggles a lot even throughout the first locations in the game and it gets worse the longer you play with the frame rate jumping all between 40 and 60 per second with heavy reprojection. Once again, sure it is playable on the GDX 1070 laptop, but I can't see myself playing this game like this in such condition where even teleportation gets a bit halted by the low frame rate. The image quality using Pytool 1.0 and SteamVR super sampling 70% is actually really good and the game is sharp and looks colorful and great, but personally I would say go for at least a GDX 1080 or even a GDX 1080 Ti to really be able to forget about the performance and really enjoy the game, because it is fun as long as it runs smooth which in this case is impossible, not even lowering down the field of view to small, which gains you less than 10 frames per second. What a shame. So yeah, a lot of bad news here, but to get our moods up again, let's try something more simple. Job Simulator. Job Simulator is among many Steam VR games that runs more or less perfect on the GDX 1070 laptop. The frame rate is not surprisingly maxed out almost the entire time, even on the 5K Plus with 90 frames per second, and the colorful environment together with the great sharpness really makes it shine on the Pimax headsets. My GDX 1070 laptop has no problem whatsoever running this game, and there are hundreds of Unity Engine games like this which runs basically the same with the same Pytool and SteamVR settings. If you are really into those simple and fun VR games, you will definitely not have any problems running them on your laptop, maybe even on a GDX 1060 I would say. Remember, there is also room for performance improvements with small field of view or lower Pytool values, but in this case it was definitely not needed. But there are also some Unity Engine games which I think should run fine but doesn't. 
Catch and Release is a very good example, a very fun and one of the very few fishing games in VR. It's colorful, it's sharp and it's great looking, but somehow also very GPU in the bonding. Maybe it's the water effects or maybe it's just bad coding, but Catch and Release runs rather poor on my GDX 1070 laptop, which I find very surprising. The frame rate is jumping between 65 and 75 frames per second almost constantly, and even going on low details in game does not give us any better numbers. So if you want to do fishing in VR, you better bait up with some more powerful PC components than a GDX 1070 laptop, at least if you want to enjoy the game in wide or normal field of view with the Pimax 8K or the 5K+. So how about some table tennis action in wide field of view with the Pimax? Well, I tested 11 table tennis, which is definitely the most popular ping pong simulator of them all. I gotta say, I'm a bit surprised here. I had to practically lower down most in-game settings and go in-game render scale slightly below 1.0 to even maintain an almost stable 90 frames per second frame rate. Being a sports game, you really can't play this with reprojection as you will totally lose your position and most likely lose your matches as well if the frame rate keeps you from doing your best. With a GTX 1070 laptop, it's not impossible to reach a stable frame rate, but it costs a lot of the visuals and also a bit of the clarity by disabling some of the settings and not being able to use the game super sampling. I also need to add that the wide field of view you get with the normal field of view mode we're using right now with the Pimax 8K headset doesn't really add up much to the game or the immersion, as you're basically looking at the ball in front of you most of the time. So switching to normal field of view is definitely a good idea and it can help you a lot to, to reach a stable frame rate of 80 or 90 frames per second. I didn't do that in this test, but with normal field of view I could at least play 11 table tennis for a while, even if I really suck on table tennis in general. Next up. Carnage Chronicles, a really beautiful game and also a very challenging RPG adventure that recently got multiplayer support. A game you should all try if you still haven't and thanks to the active developers it gets constantly updated with new content and better visuals. Unfortunately this is an Unreal Engine game and as many Unreal Engine games it suffers from low frame rates on the Pimax headsets mainly because of the high resolution rendered. Well it seems like the engine can't really keep up with their rendering resolution uh, and the beautiful environment with an acceptable frame rate on a GTX 1070, no matter what settings I try. Throughout this testing, I had a jumping frames per second number of all between 40 to 60, which is far from good to really enjoy this game. Sometimes I could see numbers even below 40 and in that moment the game gets totally unplayable. I need to add though that Carnage Chronicles runs perfectly smooth on my GDX 1080 Ti desktop PC both on the Pimax 5K Plus and the Pimax 8K, so this is not about a bad coded game. I think it's just the fact that today's gaming laptops are simply not good enough for a lot of Unreal Engine games played with the next gen VR headsets such as Pimax. Graphics are beautiful of course, but that costs a lot of performance. You need more horsepower and a laptop like mine is definitely not enough for this task. Another Unreal Engine game tested is Gunheart, a game that really runs well on my desktop GDX 1080 Ti rig. Unfortunately, we have the same story here, a truly beautiful game that is totally unplayable because of the underpowered laptop. A frame rate between 30 and 50 frames per second is a really a pain in VR, especially because the game really is fast, full of jumps and aiming at opponents. I tried to lower the in-game settings to barely minimum and also change the in-game resolution to low, which really is low but still acceptable level, and the game just got less sharp but still ran like a potato. Well, it's a real shame, but on the other hand I'm not surprised. The GTX 1070 was announced as a bare minimum for the Pimax headsets, and a game like Gunhard is just too advanced and beautiful to be included in the list of games that even are playable on the Pimax with such a graphic card. So no, Gunheart is nothing I would recommend you to even try on a GTX 1070 and even if my laptop GPU is slower than any desktop GTX 1070, I can promise you, you will need at least a 1080 Ti to really enjoy this one with acceptable performance. 
So now let's try out In Death, another beautiful and entertaining game, but also another title which is quite demanding on the GPU. It's barely playable with a jumping frame rate between 40 and 60 frames per second, and I would say the precision you need to shoot with those arrows on opponents is somehow destroyed by the reprojection. The game really needs a stable, smooth frame rate of 80 or 90 frames per second to really be fine, I would say. I would definitely not play it on a GTX 1070 laptop again. Lowering the field of view here would just be a shame, I would say, as you really gain a lot in this game by running around with 150 degrees field of view. So small field of view is not an option for me here. If you still go for it, you might gain up to 20 frames per second here to go into small field of view, but I would say it's not worth it. In Death is one of the games that actually will support ray tracing with the upcoming RTX graphic card and I will of course cover this in some of my upcoming videos as I'm really excited about my pre-order 2080 Ti. But as you may guess, next time I will play Gunheart will be on my desktop PC of course, which actually handles the game mostly smooth and uh, with normal field of view even. So how about Lucky's Tale? One of the many Oculus exclusive which runs on the Pimax 8K and 5K Plus natively without even using SteamVR or Revive. But this test, I actually use SteamVR and Revive just because recording game sets with the native rendered is nearly impossible. So how did it go, you may ask? Well, not that good, I would say. While Lucky Sail runs perfectly on my desktop PC, I need to admit that it's barely playable on the GTX 1070 laptop, not only because the game has a quite low frame rate between 40 and 60 frames per second, but also because the game runs in slow motion when the frame rate is not maxed. It seems like the game is bound to the frame rate in a way, so as soon as you drop frames, everything will go slower and that's extremely frustrating. I even tried this with lower Pi tool render quality of 0.75 and yes, I gained some good 15 frames per second or so, but it was still not fun. This game really needs 90 or at least 80 frames per second to really shine. The beautiful graphics and the environment won't be that beautiful if everything is just going in slow motion. Running Lucky Sail without Revive by using the Pi Tool Launcher makes the frame rate better, but I will save that for another video together with a lot of other Oculus exclusives played on the Pimax, so stay tuned for that and remember to subscribe. And now, moving over to some of the most popular first-person shooters, starting with Pavlov. Running Pavlov on a GTX 1070 laptop is fully possible, but somehow I cannot reach a stable 90 frames per second with the Pimax 5K Plus and the latest Pi Tool 76 version. I remember this game was running better on previous Pi Tool versions, and this time I really tried to lower the in-game settings, but nothing gave me the stable frame rate. Mostly it was around 80, sometimes it got butter smooth at 90, but a lot of times the frame rate could go down to 70 or even lower. The graphics and sharpness running the game at PyTool 1.0 and SteamVR Super Sampling at 70% may not look as sharp as it did with SteamVR Super Sampling 100%, but at least it's not bad at all. You can still see loads of details at far distance and even without anti-aliasing in-game you won't get much jagged edges. But still, with a frame rate jumping all over the place between 70 to 90 frames per second is not really that fun and almost frustrating in many cases, especially when you're trying to aim at enemies on distance and you miss just because of reprojection stutters on your weapons. So is Pavlov really playable on a GTX 1070 laptop? Well, yes and no. For me, it's somehow under the limit of acceptable performance. But if you can look away from some reprojection and just want to have some action with your laptop, then sure, give it a go. Personally, I prefer this much more on my desktop PC, especially when you even can bump up the image quality to maximum. And how about Onward then? I would say Onward is completely fine running on the GTX 1070 laptop. I lowered down a lot of settings in games such as shadows to minimum level for example and I got quite okay frame rate between 80 and 90 frames per second even if it sometimes could dip below 80 to even mid 70. I would say it's still fully playable on the laptop and very sharp on the Pimax headsets and on the 8K you will definitely have easier to reach butter smooth performance 
performance as you only need to render 80 frames per second of course. The graphics using PyTool 1.0 and SteamVR 70% still looks really good in this game. It's sharp, it's detailed and the immersion running around in normal 150 degree field of view is just fantastic, not far from the 170 degree large field of view at all. I would never go back to small field of view in this game to gain performance as I think the field of view is really doing something special in both Onward and also Pavlov. Anyhow, yes, you can definitely play Onward on the GDX 1070 laptop and of course your desktop GDX 1070 or even maybe a desktop 1060, I don't know, at least if you lower down some settings or remove shadows completely. But I would still say that the first person military shooters deserves a more powerful rig to really shine with even more sharpness and perfectly smooth frame rate, which we don't get with my laptop after all. Now we have three more games to cover and the next one is super hot. Graphically a really simple VR game but somewhere under the surface there seems to be a lot of going on in the game engine as I can definitely not reach a stable 80 or 90 frames per second. At least not in more busy scenes. It's very odd I think and this game really should work just fine on my laptop as mine. But I guess the high resolution render with the Pimax headsets is just too much for the game to handle. Having that said, I think that the game is perfectly playable and I had no problems playing it on my GDX 1070 laptop on the Pimax 8K for example. You're controlling the time by yourself in this game, so full frame rate really is not needed in this game after all. So if Superhot is one of your favorites and your main gaming rig PC is only a laptop with a GDX 1070 at least, don't worry, you will be able to enjoy it on the Pimax. Now Wanted Killer, a very entertaining old school shooter both with waves but also complete missions and kind of a storyline. I have been playing this game a lot during the 8K M1 beta phase to see the performance as this game is quite demanding with a lot of cool environments and detailed and polished graphics. It's a game I would definitely recommend you to try, it, well it's not Skyrim or Fallout but it's something you can occasionally just jump into and have fun with. But with a GTX 1070 laptop, with a Pimax 5K Plus or the 8K, it's a no-go. The frame rate is simply awful, going anywhere between 40 to 60 frames per second and sometimes even much, much lower. In fast-paced first-person shooters like this, it's just not acceptable and for me totally unplayable. I won't play this on the game, as it actually runs perfectly on my GTX 1080 Ti, but the fact remains, if you are planning to play Wanted Killer on your Pimax whenever you go for the 8K or the 5K+, Plus, you will need a much faster PC than my so-called VR-ready laptop. And lastly, Fallout 4 VR, a game that makes even the best VR desktop rig on the market to choke, especially with the combination of Pimax headsets. I'm really not surprised as Fallout 4 VR suffers from really low frame rate even on my GTX 1080 Ti. Not because it's so damn beautiful, but because it's just badly coded or something, I don't know. We will definitely need a RTX 2080 Ti or even two of these to run Fallout 4 VR with acceptable performance I guess and maybe that won't even be enough. I know you can tweak this game a lot with the INI files and get it to run a bit better but for this test I didn't. It's a vanilla version on my laptop that at this point actually already is uninstalled simply because it makes me go mad about the reprojection. The starters playing on a GTX 1070 laptop it's just a slideshow and it's not worth it. So forget about Fallout 4 VR on your laptop, it won't blend. So yes guys, this was today's lineup of totally 19 VR games tested on my GDX 1070 laptop with the Pimax 5K and the 8K. What do you think? Let me know. Is a VR ready gaming laptop really ready for the next generation of VR headsets and wide field of view such as Pimax can deliver? I would say definitely not. The majority of the game struggles with low frame rates and a whole bunch of them are not even playable to say the least, no matter how much tweaking you do in the settings. Of course you can make practically every single game playable in 80 or 90 frames per second if you go low enough on the image quality, but in my opinion it's definitely not worth it. The Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus are two high-end VR headsets which of course deserves high-end spec PC rigs with the best 
best possible graphic cards. If you can't get more than a GTX 1070 laptop or a desktop GTX 1070 PC, you will struggle a lot. If you're waiting for your Pimax 8K or 5K Plus pledge, only having a GDX 1070 desktop PC or even a GDX 1070 laptop, you will sooner or later need to upgrade. And with the new VR games coming out being even more demanding, I think we need to accept that the GDX 1070 has already passed its best before date now. And while you pledge for your Pimax or even consider buying it or pre-order it, I'm sure you are a real VR enthusiast by now. And I'm sorry if I sound harsh now, but a true VR enthusiast does not play on a GTX 1070 anymore. That's a fact I would say. Or am I wrong? Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Please subscribe and leave a like on this video and consider supporting me on Patreon if you appreciate my videos and my efforts with the Pimax headsets. I would like to give a big thanks to all my Patreons and a special thanks to my official sponsors Commander Darklight and Art Armin. You guys are awesome. Have a lovely weekend now and see you in the next one. Cheers!